Good morning, Keller Williams, and welcome back to the KW Command 66 Day Challenge 8.0, and today is day 25. So yesterday we talked about our compliance document checklists and how to submit a request for document review based upon documents that we had uploaded to our checklist. I just wanted to point out, first of all, I've got a pretty amazing compliance coordinator. She went ahead and approved that request, even though we know it was not fully complete and it was on a fake opportunity. But I just wanted to show you guys what this looks like when your request has been approved. We can click view opportunity from the notifications bell and actually get taken directly into that opportunity. So that's pretty convenient, a pretty cool setup that that notification came in. In addition, by the way, this notification also showed up on my phone in the command app because I was connected to this market center at the time. So know that your notifications, if you're utilizing the command app, will come in not only through desktop, but also on your mobile device, as long as you have the command app downloaded and you're utilizing it. So you can now see the listed folder has been approved. That being said, inside of the actual document management, you can see that this particular file was returned just so that you can see what it looks like when a document placeholder is actually returned. And my compliance coordinator even left me a note and she said, hey, you're missing your client initials. So just so you guys can be aware, your compliance coordinator can send you notes about a particular document, if it's missing, what you need to get done. In this case, if I wanted to, I would click the three dots and I would update. And when I do that update, I'm gonna get a modal that will pop up. It's gonna allow me to say, this is the version with initials. And then I can find that correct document. I can upload that from DocuSign or again from my hard drive, just the same exact way that we did yesterday. I could also go through and search files for any of my custom folders. And you can see DocuSign already shows the room docs that are here. Uh, I could choose to go inside of my computer and upload that from my Google Drive as well if I wanted to. So that's how you would update a document placeholder that was not compliant. And this is what it would look like when your folder was approved because it is compliant. Let's transition into offers and commissions at this point, And we're going to talk about the ability to actually start getting paid. So let's say that our listing is now live. We have received an offer. We have negotiated the contract. We have executed the contract. We want to start getting that information into command. So the first thing we want to do is click on add new offer. You would want to title your offer, right? In this case, let's say that uh, Marty McFly wants to buy Homer and Marge's house. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to call this new offer Marty McFly offer and let's say that they were wanting to buy at 450,000 and the offer was a cash offer all right so putting in as much details as possible you may even want to put the agent's name if that was important to you to remember this is especially important if you have multiple offers and you're using this tool to compare those offers so now that i've titled it i'm going to click on create offer and we get four sections that we need to start filling out in order for this offer to be available to move to the next portion, the commissions portion. So the first thing is version name. You can see we just typed that in, but if we wanted to make changes to it, we certainly could. When did the offer come in? So let's say the offer came in today. And then what's the proposed close date? Now know that you can come back and edit this at any point and you'll be asked to confirm it at the very end when you move the opportunity to the closed phase. But let's say they want to close on November 30th. And the next section we're going to move into is the parties section, where we're going to put all the information about the buyer, seller, and then the agents involved in the transaction as well. So this buyer was fictional character Marty McFly. We could put in the email, phone number, address, etc. We're going to come in and put the associate's name. So this was Bobby Buyer Agent. <clears throat> we would put in Bobby's email and phone number. You can see it auto loads in your name as the associate name. Now, obviously, this is our demo account. We do have to put in our demo email. So I'll just put in my email here. And we can click on Terms next. So when we get into terms, we start filling in the information that we've received from the offer or contract. So in this case, 
we said that this was $450,000 all cash. If there was some additional amount that was financed, I could put the amount that was financed and you can see the sales price auto computes that information as well. Was there any earnest money? If so, you can decide whether you're putting in a percentage or the dollar amount. So let's say that they're putting up 1% earnest money. Well, you can see there it automatically fills in the earnest amount. Perhaps we got the contract and they said, hey, we're really serious. We're gonna put up $10,000 of earnest money. You can see it automatically figures out the percentage. Was there an option fee and a due diligence period or termination period? You can see that those are two additional blanks. So let's say they wanted to have a 10 day option period and they're offering $250 as far as their option fee goes. Finally, two last blanks. Are they asking for a residential service contract? And if so, is the seller being asked to contribute to that? And are they asking the seller to contribute anything to their settlement costs? Two additional blanks that you can pull from almost any real estate contract. Finally, you've got the agent analysis section. This agent analysis section is really good if you're doing offer comparisons. So if you have received multiple offers, you're looking for a quick and easy way to compare those offers, this is a fantastic section to fill out. Now, if you've already executed this offer, it's probably not much point filling out the agent analysis because obviously you already had a communication with your sellers and they felt like it was a strong enough offer to go ahead and accept. So if you were doing it for comparison's sake, we might say this was all cash, 30 day close, the con, let's say the pride of the house was listed at 475, so I might just put 25K under list. And then a summary, right? Uh, cash offer, always a little, well, always be careful about using the word offer. Um, doesn't have appraisal involved. Um, I know the agent and have worked with them before. If that's important for your sellers to know, right? If it's a strong agent, you can put whatever you'd like in that summary to go ahead and present that as far as comparing offers. Now I'm gonna go ahead and save this offer. And you can see it now shows up in our offer timeline. I also have the ability, if I wanted to, to add a new offer. If I added that offer, we would have the ability to begin comparing those offers and even create an actual offer comparison sheet that we could send to our seller to go ahead and look at and consider, right, and compare. So let's go ahead and do that just so I can show you that and then we'll dive into commissions tomorrow. So let's say the next one came from, um, let's just say Garfield the cat and this one was 475, uh, conventional financing and it's a 45 day close. All right, so I'm putting in all the information just so I can easily tell the difference between my offers. Uh, the offer date came in October 31st and they want to close uh, mid-December. So they're looking to close on December 15th. We're gonna click on parties. Again, that buyer's name was Garfield T. Cat. And uh, imagine that is Bobby with a Y buyer agent this time. And we're gonna drop in my email. This is just so you can see at kw.com how to compare offers if you are entering and or receiving multiple offers. So let's say they're putting down 10%. They're gonna finance the rest. So that's, uh, what's 475 less? Uh, I should have known this. Here's what we can do, right? Let's make it easy for those that don't wanna do math. I'm pretty sure if I come over here and put in 475, well, I thought that worked. That would have been a little easier, huh? Let's get out the calculator real quick and figure out what 90% of 475 is. I should have had this ready for you guys and I apologize. That's 427.5 that they're gonna end up financing. Whoops, there we go. Uh, they're putting down 1% earnest money. They're gonna do a $100 option fee, but they only want seven days. Uh, they are asking the seller to contribute to a home warranty, $500 for that, uh, but they don't want any settlement costs. So we could go into agent analysis and put in our pros, cons, and summary again, and then click on save. So list price, cons might be asking for home warranty, 45 day close, uh, must appraise. And then summary, I'll, I might even put in here, I'll call to discuss, especially if we have multiple offers. 
All right, so we're gonna click on save. Now that we have more than one offer, you can see we start getting check boxes. So when we get these check boxes, we can actually select more than one of them and we now have a compare offers button that if we choose to select, it'll actually line out all of those items that we just put in and we can choose to email this offer comparison or download it and then send it, print it, do whatever we'd like with that actual offer comparison. So if we click on download, you're gonna see a PDF gets created and there's all the information for that actual multiple offer situation and your offer comparison. That's it for today, guys. Basically building out the actual offer and a little bit more on your compliance checklist and what those look like. Tomorrow, we're actually gonna accept an offer and then I'm gonna show you what it looks like to build out your commission request. Stay tuned for that. As always, I hope you're having a fantastic day and look forward to speaking with you again real soon.